Shalom, Shalom. <clears throat> shalom, Shalom. We want to deal with this uh, particular um, question concerning pyramids and the Bible. Often it has been assumed concerning the Bible that Christ is the head cornerstone and by that some have assumed that when it says that Christ is the head cornerstone we're going to here to show you some pyramids if we if we can I don't know if this is a good image right here but let's um see if we can open this one up right here and um okay this is Yeshua okay pyramids and the Bible. You're familiar with the pyramid and uh, the capstone of the pyramid as well. And we've been addressing a particular, a particular, let's see if we can go right into this folder right here. We've been addressing a particular um, question recently concerning the so called eye on the dollar the so-called eye on the dollar. Okay, you're familiar with this symbol right here, which is actually, some say, a pantacle. It's actually a a pantacle of sorcery, or what some refer to as being um, black magic. This particular symbol right here, let's move this over. This particular symbol right here. Pyramids and the Bible. Now, the question that we like to present right here in this is concerning a speculation regarding the capstone and Christ. The capstone and Christ. Often it's been said that Christ is the let's see right here. Christ is the, this is the this is a good picture right here. It's a you're familiar with, no doubt you're familiar with this eye, or some call is the eye of uh, Lucifer or the eye of Satan on the dollar bill. Now you can see we have the image of the woman of wickedness right there because this is already a ready folder that we have tried to save certain images for such a for such a presentation, but we have not been able to um, present it exactly the way that we would like to but we feel that it's necessary to even begin and address the basic um, issue okay we'll use it right here we have a couple of basic working images so here is here is the um, basic question concerning um, pyramids and the Bible and the capstone and and Christ the capstone and Christ pyramids and the Bible the question is this is Yeshua is our black Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ the capstone on the pyramid or is he the capstone on top of a pyramid as some and many have claimed that this symbol right here refers to Christ, and Christ is that I right there. That's what many people believe when they read certain verses within the Bible and misunderstand. Or is the real truth that the Bible states when it's properly interpreted that Christ, he is the main cornerstone of the foundation of God's, the true God's spiritual house, or dwelling this is the main question and the main idea that we're seeking to address here so is he the capstone as one would say on top of a pyramid or a pyramidical structure or according to the Bible is he the main cornerstone is he the main cornerstone so in order to begin this there's a couple of verses that we would like to address and there's some there's some background because many churches there are many churches 
and many so-called religious groups that are like churches or claim to be um, churches or claim to be Christians that do assume that Christ is this capstone. And when we look at a couple of um, verses within the scriptures, there are some verses within the scriptures that in their um, interpretation or misinterpretation have led many to believe that. Now, first of all, what we must become acquainted with is the facts. And the fact is that the word that we call pyramid is not found in the Bible. If we look up the word pyramid, we don't find this word pyramid in the Bible, nor are the pyramids mentioned by that name in the scriptures or any name that one can rightly say that this is pyramid when we go back to the root of where the word pyramid actually comes from in our so-called English language. But why do some people talk about pyramids and capstones as if they are scriptural things? That's the first question. Why do they talk about pyramids and capstones as though they are scriptural or biblical things concerning, for example, the pyramids of Egypt and other pyramidical um, structures as well? Now, that's, that's one. Secondly, secondly, the second um, question that we would like to um, address the second question is is Yeshua is our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is he a capstone on top of a pyramid as some and many seem to claim even Christians or is he as the Bible says when properly interpreted is he the main corner stone of the foundation. This is a very important question. This is a very important question to understand. Is he a capstone on top of a pyramid, such as the eye that we just showed you on the pentacle of the dollar? Is he this particular type of uh, capstone on top of some structure, either a pyramid or the most popular pyramidical, one of the most popular pyramidical um, symbols is actually is actually this is he the capstone on top of a uh, on top of a pyramid or as the scriptures maintains is he the main cornerstone of the foundation of God's spiritual God's spiritual dwelling Next question is, does the Bible support the concept of a so-called pyramid sort of, sort of a structure, a pyramid structure for so-called religious organizations? Now, some preachers and other teachers and other folks, they talk about pyramids and a pyramid structure hierarchies. Now, they all claim that there's a word in the Greek, you understand, in the Greek text of Ephesians 2 and 20 and 1 Peter 2 and 6, and also in Isaiah 28 and 16, according to the Septuagint version of the Bible that they say supposedly refers to a top stone, a pyramid or a pyramidical cap stone. However, when we look at the Old Greek, the word for a capstone or a top stone is a different word. And this is what we're going to explore. Now, the word acrogonios, or gonios, acrogonios, it referred to the main corner stone or foundational stone in meaning the main foundation stone or the first stone and not capstone. Now the word for um, capstone or a top stone, let's bring this up right here. The word for a capstone or a top stone as for the pyramids is the word corufosis. Corufosis. Now 
let's just look right here at Ephesians uh, 2 and 20 for a moment. So here we're going into our iota or the yota text, and we'll bring up Ephesians, Ephesians 2, what a face on the sawoch, the King James and the King of Kings version of the Bible side by side. And we'll go down to verse 20. Let's go to verse 20. Okay, here we're at verse 20. And it says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Now, Bamarinya, it says, that Hawariyatina benediyata masaretalai tana fachukhal. Ye ma is a noon a ras a dingai Christos Jesus no. Now let's click on this right here. Let's click on the twenty right here, the the verse number, and we're gonna open the English with the Greek dictionary. Open the English with the Greek dictionary. So now we open the English with the Greek dictionary, as you can see in this column over here. You can see we go down to the King James Version, KJV, with Strong's Numbers. And which word we're going to look at? Now, let's look at this right here. It says, and are built, and this is 20, the Greek 2026, upon 1909, the foundation. Now, this is, there's two words right here. One is 3588, then we have 2310 of the apostles, then it has 3588 again, and it says 60. Five two and prophets Jesus Christ Himself being the chief corner stone. Now that word italicized right there, stone, means it doesn't appear, but it's implied. All right, but it's implied. So let us click on the two o four. Let us click on the two o four and let us bring up. Over here in this column, the Strong's Hebrew slash the Greek dictionary. Now you can see clearly <clears throat> the word that we was talking about that's in the Bible is acrogonios. Acrogonio. Acrogonio. Then it says from the 206 and it says from the 11. 37, belonging to the extreme corner. You see that right there? Belonging to what? The extreme corner. A cap cannot be a corner. Chief corner. It says the chief corner. Let's see if this has anything else here for us. Now, it gives us a couple of uh, Bible references to the 204 and this particular word, um, ak grog o niayo. Akrogoniayo, and this Akrogoniayo is also found in First Peter 2 and 6. So when we go to First Peter 2 and 6, we bring that up down here. It says, wherefore, verse 6, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in a Sion, a chief corner stone, Elect precious, and he that believeth my menace on him shall not be confounded, shall not be confused. And here in Andenya Petros Malekut, Miraf Hulet Kutur Sidis says, Methath, Enoho, Yetamaret Enna, Ye Kabrena, Ye Mazen Ras. Dingai bez yon anoralo, the arsum yemiyamin ayafrim, teblo tetra for alena. So we can see clearly even here it has the same phraseology. Bamarinya says, yeah, ma zen of a corner, four sided, four sided um, type of a structure, a ma zen. Ras, the head of a corner dingai, the stone that is the ras, that is the ras of the maizen, not a capstone. Now, as we said, there's another word in the Greek. There's another word in the Greek. 
it's a total different word. But let's break this down right here, the, the, the second part, acro is the first part, and then we addressing the gonia. Gonia so is probably akin to the 11, 19, an angle. It says a corner, a quarter. Now, ma is then seems to imply that very same meaning. Ma is then as acro corresponds to aras, which says the head, the head of a corner. But aras not only means head, aras implicitly means the first. So as Aras is used, or Rosh, within the um, Eastern or Biblical languages, it's not head only in the sense, okay, here's this Google thing popping up. Yeah, it's not only the head in that sense, but also is implied first. Like when we look at the first book of the Torah in the Ibraist, the Masoretic Ibraist, it is called uh, Berashit, Beras, Beras. Berashit is the first book of the Bible in the head, or is it in the beginning? So the real idea implied in the capstone, the real idea for capstone, you understand, or, or what people believe is the capstone is really a cornerstone, which refers to in building the first stone that is laid. You see right there the laying of stone or the diagram? And then we can show you some other pictures over here. Let's see if we can bring up some of these other pictures where they are right here, some of the so-called masons, you understand, are the stone masons are laying a stone right here. This stone that they're laying right here in front of, it seems like the capital, the D.C. capital, um, the stone that they're laying right here with their symbol or sigil whatnot on it is actually a first stone. It's a so-called foundation, what's known as a foundation stone. As over here you can see, this is that laying of a stone or the laying of a stone. So it's clear that Christ, that Jesus Christ is not to be confused with this so-called idea of this Illuminati eye on the top of the dollar. We already addressed that within the Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, where this eye is actually mentioned, but you have to either read the the Hebrew version of the Bible, the Hebrew translations to the King James for Zechariah chapter 5 verse 6 to really understand this is their I in all the earth. In King James it says this is their um, remembrance in all the earth. And you can clearly see that this is the Nouveau Ordo Seclorum 1776 structure. And this is a so-called capstone or top stone but what the Bible is saying you know is a cornerstone now how could they miss the so-called capstone for cornerstone that's that, that is a big big a big big difference any architect or any mason who is not a speculative mason but if you really have to build real buildings you need to understand exactly what you're talking about but many Christians, especially the preachers and teachers and others out there who have not studied this very carefully, have made believe and make others believe, some of them ignorantly and this probably some knowingly, that when the Bible is talking about Christ is the head corner or the or, or the or the or the head corner stone, they are confusing that head idea, not understanding Hebrew or the Shemitic or Ethiopic, that it is not saying that he is the top capstone, but that our black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach or Jesus Christ, that actually Jesus Christ, he is that first stone. He is that first cornerstone. In the words, in building, he is that particular first stone. Now, there's a likeness in the prophecy, especially in Daniel, which some say this time that we are in is actually like um, Daniel's uh, stone prophecy, where there's a stone that's not cut by hands that actually falls on this image 
of the beast or the, this image, this end time image, and this stone falling on its feet. You can see this in Daniel's prophecy uh, falls over. In other words, it collapses, it, it breaks apart. And this is one of the, we can say, eschatological prophecies that speak of the judgment and Christ's kingdom. So this stone actually, biblically, scripturally speaking, is associated with a kingdom and therefore associated with Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So it's important for us to distinguish capstone from cornerstone. It's very important to understand the difference between the capstone and the cornerstone. Because in other words, if you believe that he is the capstone, then you believe that he is not the first stone in the building of the structure. This is what we see that this prophecy right here is a very important prophecy in Daniel where it talks about the kingdom, this kingdom, cut, and there's a stone that's not cut with human hands, and it falls on this image, you understand, of the end time beast or the end time Babylon. It falls on that image during the time of the divided kingdom. And it's interesting because America and the whole world system seem to be going through some um, divisions, too, in their so-called New World Order. And then there's this stone at judgment, you understand, which corresponds to judgment time, which falls on the feet of the beast. And then it speaks about Christ's kingdom now is established. In other words, Christ's kingdom is established in the world. But Christ's kingdom is not based on a kingdom or a government coming out of heaven, so to speak. You know, you know like as though it's an extraterrestrial government or something like that, or the aliens or crisis. No, it's based on a kingdom already established in the earth. You understand? And we say that this is the true Ethio, uh, Hebraic and Ethiopic Christian kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So it's important for us to understand that Christ is the first stone and building of God's spiritual, we can say, his spiritual house or church or the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. And he is not the so-called um, capstone on the pyramid as many of the, the Masons you understand, and New World Orderists, you understand, would have you, um, would have you believe. Instead, what we need to do is we need to reverse this image in order to put it right side up. In other words, for Christ to be the capstone is wrong, according to the interpretation, because the interpretation says he's the first stone. And now putting the pyramid in this upside down fashion, similar to the hands of his imperial majesty, which actually symbolizes the true structure. This will be the true structure of God's kingdom is actually the inverse or the reverse of the Satanistic structure that we know as the so-called New World Order or the Freemasons, so forth and so on. So Christ, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, he is the first stone. He is that first stone in a foundational sense, not the so-called capstone that many have been led to believe in the Illuminati sense or in the so-called New World Order sense. So if we put it right side, this is the wrong side. This would be the right side. So as capstone, this is the way that they say it today as capstone, but when we read the Bible and we interpret it correctly, he is the first stone in building. So in other words, we would have to flip this image upside down. But if we understand it in its simple building sense, he is that first stone similar to this first stone right here. Or if we look at a picture of the so-called masons outside the Capitol Dome, we see them laying a corner stone. Christ is the corner stone, and he is that stone of Daniel and Revelation prophecy that we find here in this end-time symbology. 
you understand this end time symbology where there's the feet, the feet of iron and clay, and then the stone that's not cut with human hands, it falls and dashes and smashes the feet of the idol, and the idol falls over, you understand, but the stone grows and the stone fills all of the earth, and this is Christ's kingdom, or the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. And this is the particular time period that we are in right now eschatologically, eschatologically. So I hope this has been useful. And please go look up the words for yourself. As we said, there are two um, main words. You understand? There is the word uh, korufosis, which is from older Greek, korufosis or spelled like this, and then there's the word ak grogo niayo, ak niayo, and that's what the Bible is speaking of, a cornerstone in the meaning of a main foundation stone, a main foundation stone. So eschatologically, that would be the stone right here that hits the idol, at its so-called weakest point, its divided point, and causes the, the idol to fall over. But the stone continues to grow and grow and to fill the entire, to fill the entire earth. And this is the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ symbolic of this stone which dashes the idol image and continues to grow and grow and to fill the entire earth. So Shalom Ras Teferi.